Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. How many glad to be in church this morning? Amen. Amen. Uh, how many thankful for the reckless love of God? Amen. That uh, there wasn't anything He wouldn't do to reach you. Amen. Uh, we were not the ones searching for Him. He came searching for us. And He found us. Aren't you glad that He found you? Uh, how many were in a good place when He found you? A good place when He found you. Not after He found you, when He found you. Exactly. And uh, he, His reckless love is, he'll, he'll climb any mountain, He will uh, go down to the darkest pit. And God doesn't go to the clean places to save the lost. He'll go anywhere He has to just to reach us. Aren't you thankful for that? Come on, let's give God one more hand of praise this morning. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Grab your Bible with me and turn to the gospel according to John. I'm excited about today. I'm going to bring some things out that I want to challenge you with. Uh, hopefully bring some understanding to you. Um, we've been talking about uh, being unified. Amen. And uh, our series is entitled Stronger Together. We are stronger together. There's an old leadership uh, mantra that's been used millions of times, but uh, it bears repeating, and that's um, the word team, T-E-A-M, together everyone achieves more. We can do more as a team than we can individually, right? We can do more together, uh, you know, instead of us just, you know, walking with God alone, we, it is more powerful to walk t- with God together, amen? So that's kind of what we're talking about, and so today I want to talk to you about the power of one. Say that with me, the power of one. The power of one. Uh, so if you will go to John chapter 17, uh, we will begin in verse number 20. John 17, verse 20. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those, watch this, who will believe in me through their word. Look at somebody and say, he's talking about you. Now, what, what color in your Bible are these words written in? So Jesus is talking, and he says this, I do not pray for these alone, referring to his disciples, but praying for those who will believe in Christ because of the disciples' word. Right? He's talking about you now. Verse 21, that they, us, may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. May they also be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory which you gave me, that they may be one, even as we are one. Do you see a theme? I in them, you in me, that they may be perfect in unity, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Verse 24, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may see my glory which you have given me. For you loved me before the creation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you. And these have not known you, but they have known that you sent me. I have declared your name in them and will declare it that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. The power of one. I want to recap a little bit from some things that we've been talking about. Uh, You know, part three, we talked about the power of one. And we talked about that we believe that something good is about to happen in this place. Amen. Can't you feel, couldn't you just feel it during worship today? Uh, Something is stirring. Something is moving. And I believe we are on the verge of a, an awesome breakout of the Spirit of God. And so if something good is going to happen in this place, then we need to be reminded of part of the vision of this house, which is this, and I want you to say it together. We see a church, one heart, 
one mind and one purpose. Let's read it again. We see a church growing together with one heart, one mind, and one purpose. Don't you see that? Amen? There's power in unity. There's blessing in unity. And then we talked about the last time we were together that there is something that we must be aware of, and that is the spirit of discord. So we declare today that discord, dissension, division, and strife has no place in this house. Come on, somebody somebody say this with me. Discord, dissension, division, and strife has no place in this house. Amen? In other words, I am for you, you are for me, and we are stronger together. Amen? Come on, say that with me. I am for you, you are for me, and we are stronger together. Amen? We are stronger together. Unity does not take place simply because, you know, We all have the same thoughts and ideas and those types of things. Unity takes place when we make the choice to put aside our differences and build upon the foundation of our agreement. Amen? I mean, it would be boring if everybody looked the same, acted the same, dressed the same, walked the same. Right? That would be like, we're not stormtroopers. Okay. For those of you who've never seen Star Wars, you don't know what I'm saying, but it's okay. Um, but, you know, we're, <clears throat> we're not robotic. Um, that is why I believe God is going to raise us up to be a multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-generational church. <clears throat> because we're not, we're not all called to be the same, right? We're not all called to look the same, act the same, dress the same, walk the same, talk the same. That's not what we're called to be. <clears throat> we are called to be a body of believers <clears throat> that have different backgrounds, that have different ideas, that have different um, experiences, but then we come together and we choose to have one heart, one mind, and one purpose. You know, I believe that you, a local church should reflect its community. And if, it, if a local church, uh, if a local community is 100% white, then the church obviously is going to be 100% white. But if you've got a community that's got black folks, and Hispanic folks, and Asian folks, and how, whatever Middle Eastern folks, and you name it, whatever their ethnicity is, then that local church ought to embody the demographic of their community. Otherwise, the church isn't doing something to reach its community. And there's no such thing as the white church. There's no such thing as the black church. There's no such thing as the Spanish church. There's no such thing as the Asian church. Amen? There's the church. Amen? And so... You know, uh, get comfortable. Get comfortable because I believe God's going to do it in this place. Amen. So we've got to learn that unity takes place when we choose uh, not to ignore our differences, but to celebrate our differences. You know, you might have one row of people and, and, and one person on that row likes country western music and the other person on that row likes rap. And it doesn't make us at odds with one another. It makes us celebrate the differences of one another and then making the decision to be in agreement with that person. And it doesn't matter what their preferences are. It only matters that their heart is on fire for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <laughs> In this house, say this with me, in this house, house, we are not not a gathering gathering of competing agendas. agendas. See what I did there? I made you say it and you didn't know what you were saying. (laughs) But in this house, we are not a gathering of competing agendas. We are a family. We're a family. We are a family with one common goal, and that is... We, my God, I mean, we just want to win the loss and have a move with the Holy Ghost. It really, nothing else matters, does it? Winning the loss and having a move of His Spirit, that is our common goal. And so because of that, we make the choice to celebrate what makes us different and to make the decision, I'm going to be in unity with you no matter what, and no devil is going to walk up in here and make me divided against you. Amen? Amen. 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 Unity, according to John chapter 17, is the desire of Jesus. John 17 records the last prayer that Jesus prayed before the Garden of Gethsemane. And in John chapter 17, he begins to pray and call out to God. 
And he he begins by thanking God for those that he's entrusted to his care, his disciples. For the multitude, for the twelve, and for the three. And as he's praying, in verse 20, he changes gears. And he makes this statement. In John chapter 20, he says, he says, but not only for these do I pray, but for those who will believe. His heart's cry is that his church would be unified. His heart's cry is not that his church would be divided, not that we would fight with one another, not that we would bicker with one another, not that we would tear each other down, but that we would have each other's back. Not by saying, I've got your back, and then we've got a dagger behind ours, right? i got your back. What I mean by I've got your back is I've got your back, I've got your front, I've got your above, and you're underneath, i got you covered. That's his desire. That when one struggles, we all struggle. If one celebrates, we all celebrate. Amen? Aren't you glad you belong to a church like that? He desires not only that we would be unified, but that we'd be, we would be as unified as the early church. And when I read the Bible, when I read the book of Acts and through the epistles, and I see some things in the early church that I would like to draw your <clears throat> attention to today. There's a verse of, of Scripture <coughs> excuse me, in the book of Acts that says that they were all together, <coughs> excuse me, That's better. They were all together in one place, and the Bible says they had all things in common. Say that with me. They had all things in common. <clears throat> now, we understand that on a fleshly level, we don't have all things in common, do we? Uh, how, many, how many Chiefs fans are in the building? How many don't like the Chiefs? Raise your hand. Uh huh. Y'all from Chicago. Uh, <clears throat> how many could care less? <clears throat> uh, how many Cardinal fans do we have in the building? Bless your heart. How many Dodger fans are in the building? You better put your hand down. <laughs> how many Atlanta Braves fans are in the house? And so, uh, you know, you're, do- uh, you know, God bless you. Uh, the good guys won. Anyway, uh, and so that's kind of the point, you know, on a certain level, <clears throat> we don't have all things in common according to the flesh, but we should have all things in common according to the spirit. And that's Jesus' desire for his church. Listen to this. In the early church, thank you. In the early church, they gathered together. They suffered together. They went to war together. They joined together. They were tempered together. They assembled together. They dwelled together. They pitched together. They met together. They were called together. They were knit together. They were wrapped together. They congregated together. They were purified together. They sang together. They took counsel together. They were at rest together. They were fashioned together. They stuck together. They were joyful together. They lived together. They reasoned together. They stood together. They pleaded together. They sprung up together. They drew near together. They bowed down together. They flowed together. They fed together. They cried together. They could be brought together, walk together, grow together, sit together, agree together, talk together, commune together. They went forth together, banded together, planted together, glorified together. They were perfectly joined together, laborers together, workers together, quickened together, framed together, bound together. They were built together. They were heirs together. They were elected together. (coughs) and they were made to sit together (coughs) excuse me in heavenly places how many want to be together like that amen come on say lord make us one one. make us together in jesus name (coughs) we can get through this if it's the last thing i do amen (laughs) amen Just so you know, I haven't coughed in months. So obviously the devil doesn't want us to be together. But I'm telling you right now, we're together. 
and we're going to walk together, and we're going to gather together, and we're going to sing together, and we're going to pray together, and we're going to rejoice together. Amen? Come on. In verse 20, Jesus said this, I pray for those who will believe in me through their word. He prayed for us. His desire, watch this, was not just for those who were walking with them, but for all believers. His desire is for all believers to walk together. His desire, God's, de Jesus' desire is not for you to have an issue with somebody at church and see them and then go and sit on the other side of the building so that you don't have to fix your issue. Y'all know what I'm saying? Mm. They're on that side. Well, I normally sit on that side, but not today. The devil is a liar. That's not God's desire. You know what? Instead of ignoring people you have issues with, bring them to the altar and fix the issues. Amen. Amen. Come on, look at somebody and say, Jesus prayed for us. In verse 21, Jesus said this, that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they may also be one in us. That the world may believe that you sent me. He desires for the church to walk together. And he has empowered us to overcome all division. Amen. You have to understand something. You cannot, okay, hear me. You cannot control when somebody brings something negative to you, but you can control whether or not it stays with you. You cannot control when somebody comes to you tearing somebody down, but you can shut it down when it starts. Well, I just, you know, and don't be fooled. Don't be deceived by how some folks operate. You know, have you heard about so-and-so? Okay, end of conversation. That's not a good way to start. W what about them? Well, and I'm, I'm only telling you this so that you can pray with me for them. You know what? If you have a concern with your brother or your sister, rather than involving another brother or sister, why don't you go to them directly and deal with it? You know what I mean? That is like if, if I've got an issue with Travis, right? And I don't. But if I had an issue with Travis, that would be like me going to Zach and saying, I'm concerned about Travis. Will you pray with me? Zach then should say, if you're that concerned, why don't you go to Travis yourself? Don't involve me with your issues, right? That is like the wife who has an issue with her husband and complains to her mama. Oh, I'm not going to get no help this morning, huh? That's like the husband who has an issue with his wife and then talks to his best buddy about it. Don't involve people that ain't got nothing to do with the other person. Does, all make, does that make sense? We cannot walk together if we're rallying people. Why do we do that? We do that to rally people who will agree with us. That's not the kind of unity we're after. <coughs> Are you here? Yeah. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not COVID, just in case anybody's worried. <laughs> Remember when people had coughs and it didn't mean nothing? Okay, anyway, separate story for another day. Amen? He has empowered us to overcome all division. Why? So that the world will believe. So that the world will believe. I need you to write this down somewhere. In your notes, in your Bible, on your forearm. Our unity impacts our ability to win the lost. Our unity impacts our ability to win the lost if we can't agree with one another how in the world will we bring people to the cross of jesus christ that is it is such an important issue you know that's the one thing i've had jehovah's witness come to my door and they're in agreement with each other i've had mormons come to my door they're in agreement with one another they're not divided because they know they can't recruit if they don't agree. Especially if they come to my house. Because you, you, you got a mouthy and you got a silent. That's the trainee. Which means they don't know nothing. 
So that's, oh, I, oh get out of my house. Get, no, no, come in. Come in. Have a seat. What would you like to share with me? So I had this, I had this a Jehovah's Witness older man and younger guy come to my apartment one time when I was single. And they came in and uh, I said, what, what do you want to talk to me about? So we just want to share something. And I said, only on one agreement. They said, what's that? I said, after you've told me everything you have to say, you give me fair opportunity. And they're like, well, of course. I was like, okay, let's go. So they do their whole spiel. And the whole time this young kid, he's just, he's just keeping his mouth shut and looking down. He don't want to do nothing to mess it up. So the guy gets done with his spiel. And he goes, what do you think of this great news? And I said, I would like to respond to that, but before I do, what do you think about this young man? He just looked at me. I said, do you agree with everything? Sure. No, 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 no. Do you, what is your opinion? What is your perspective of everything he just said? So he told me, and I said, okay, first question, why do you believe that? Um, uh, I said, exactly. I said, you don't. You've been told what to believe. And the guy said, well, I think we've spent enough time of your blah, blah. And I said, no, no, no. It's my turn. And I said, hold on just a second. I went and grabbed my Bible. Sat down. I'm like, you want some coffee? We're going to be here a minute. And I opened up my, well, we didn't know you were like that. I said, oh, you didn't know I was saved, delivered, filled with the Holy Ghost, and in Bible college learned to be a preacher? Now I'm going to practice on you. And I opened up the word to him. <coughs> Halfway through, they got up. I said, where are you going? He's like, we're not sitting here for this. I said, but I sat here for your lies. <clears throat> and they left. And that young guy stopped, turned around and said, thank you, sir. Ooh, something got deposited in that guy that day. <laughs> Amen. But the, but the point is, if we're going to be effective in reaching the lost, we got to agree with one another. They can't, an unbeliever can't walk into this building and feel tension. They can't walk into this building and feel, man, something's not right here. They need to see people hugging on one another, smiling, good to see you. Not fake love, true, honest, authentic love. Amen? Amen. Verse 22, Jesus said, And the glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Jesus' desire, he said it multiple times in this passage, is that you and I would be unified to the degree the Father and the Son are unified. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen my Father. And if you see the Father, you see me. That is how unified Jesus and the Father are, is that there's no difference. There's no difference in character. There's no difference in power, right? God the Father is not more anointed than Jesus the Son. And the Holy Ghost is not the ugly stepchild. You understand what I'm saying? The Father is equal with the Son, and the Son is equal with the Spirit. That's how unified they are. And he said, but I pray that the glory which I have, I will give them as they are one, even as we are one. See, all these churches say they want the glory of God, but they're not willing to be one. It doesn't begin with the glory. It begins with unity. I'm going to be so unified. We need to be so unified with one another that if they see one, they see the other. You know what I'm saying? They see you, they see me. They see you, they see my wife. We are together, man. We are bonded together. We are fused together. <coughs> the definition paints the picture. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus' name. Paints the picture of taking two separate rods of iron and welding them together through fire and heat. And then when that blacksmith is done, you cannot tell where one ends and the other begins. But I, want, but I want to tell you, sometimes it takes fire to make us one. 
Sometimes it takes heat to make us one. And I pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost will come in this place and unify us so much that you cannot tell the difference between me and Melissa, between Jerry and Diana, between Dana and Judah, because we are one. We are one. You know, if somebody, I've said this before, let me say it again, if somebody comes to me, or even if they don't, if I just hear that they've said something negative about my wife or kids, I'm not going to ignore it. I have to confront that because I'm their protector. Right? We ought to have the same mentality with every single person that calls this place their home church. You going to talk about Zach just because he's a Bears fan? You and I are going to have an uncomfortable conversation because we don't talk people down. We don't slander one another. We don't attack one another. We're not a bunch of busy body backbiters in this place. I am for you. You are for me. And we are stronger together. Okay, let's try it again. I am for you. <clears throat> you are for me. And we are stronger together. Isn't it true? When we walk together, when we are banded together, God's glory will be poured out in this place. Our unity will usher in the move of the Holy Ghost. Our unity. You know, before there was a wind from heaven, before there was fire that fell, in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, and they were all together in one place. I need you to understand something. That does not mean they were just sitting in a room together. But they were together together. They were together together. They were up there. They were up there. And when the day of Pentecost finally came, seven weeks after the resurrection of Jesus, maybe it took seven weeks to get them together. How many understand being in a room doesn't make you unified? Going to church doesn't make you unified. Tithing doesn't make you unified. Singing don't make you unified. It's a decision you've got to make. Maybe, maybe God was just waiting for the day of Pentecost. I don't know. <clears throat> or maybe it took seven weeks for people to get together. You're talking about 120 believers in, in a little room? But the Bible says, but when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one accord. They were in one place. They were, there was nobody disagreeing with anybody. There was nobody fighting with anybody. There was nobody whispering about anybody. They were all together. What was their common goal? Their common goal was a word they got from Jesus. He said, go and wait until I send the promise of the Father. Whew. And when they finally got together, there was a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting together. And fire, cloven tongues as of fire fell down from heaven and settled upon each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. It was so, it was so loud so crazy, so out of control, that everybody down on the street thought they had drunk. Matter of fact, the street folks shamed them. Don't you know what time of day it is? It's too early to be drunk. And old Peter, one of my favorites, old Peter opens his mouth and says, hey man, we're not drunk on that stuff. That's what your Bible says. These are not drunk as you suppose. But this is that. <coughs> this is that. That the prophet Joel prophesied of. In the last days, I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Amen. Somebody said, but if this isn't that, I'll take this till that comes. Are you here? If what we've got now is not that, I'll take this till that comes. 
Because I'm telling you, what we feel in this place, what's moving in this place, is just a touch from heaven. And I believe something greater, something mightier, something more powerful is coming. Amen? <laughs> Say this with me. We are one. We are one. If we are going to fulfill the, watch this. This is what the point I need you to see. Then I'm going to give you something that we're going to close. But this is what I need you to see. When you and I walk together, we are in essence answering Jesus' prayer. But I'm not just pray for these, but for those who will believe that's us. That they will be one even as we are one. I and you and you and me. Whoever will believe because of their word. Well, how do, how do I know? How do I know that actually means me? Because who he said their word, he was talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Philip, Peter, James, and the rest. Do those names ring a bell? Yeah, that's called the Bible. That because of the word and we believe in Christ that God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins because of their word we believe and we're the ones that he prayed for and he said that I pray that they would be one even as you and I are one. So when you and I are together, when you and I are in unity, we are the answer to his prayer. We're the answer to his prayer. Amen. Come on, say it with me. We are one. We are one. <clears throat> to say we are one means to say that... We stand with you. We stand with you. When I say I stand with you, that's just exactly what that means. You need somebody, we're here. You're not alone. Oh, I skipped ahead. Number two, we fight for you. Look, say this with me. I will fight for you. <coughs> I will not fight with you. I will fight for you. I will not fight with you. It means that if somebody, if somebody attacks you, I'm going to stand up and fight. But pastor, that's not my fight. Oh, it is. When my brother's in a fight, I'm in a fight. When my sister's in a fight, I'm in a fight. You know, I remember, I've talked to you a little bit about my sister before. Three and a half years apart, we were not the best of friends. <clears throat> Very much a sibling rivalry. And there were even times my mother asked, did we hate each other? And, um, you know, many times, many times, you know, when I was a little kid, she shoved me around. She pushed me around. She yelled at me. I remember when I was a toddler, I remember four, four years old, I remember my father said, uh, he, was, he was concerned <clears throat> because I was outside playing. And uh, when I got up out of the grass, I, I remember to this day, I remember to this day, y'all call me crazy, I remember, <clears throat> I remember looking down and <coughs> seeing that my pants were dirty. So I got up and I cleaned myself off. And then I was playing some more and realized I had some dirt on my hands and so I cleaned myself because I wanted to be clean. And he thought that meant I was going to be a sissy. So he says to my sisters, we were all together, he goes, somebody take your brother out, rough him up in the grass. Rhonda said, I'll do it. <laughs> sure enough, yeah. Seven years old, she went out there and threw me in the grass, <coughs> jumped on me, rolled me around in the grass. She's seven, I'm, I'm four. I don't think that's fair. How about y'all? Yeah. And then I got up. And boy, I tell you, I wasn't just upset that my sister beat me up. I was really upset. I had grass and dirt all over me, and I went and begged for a bath. And that kind of evolved from there, and we just had all that. And then she became a teenager while I was still an adolescent. And anytime she got on the phone with one of her friends, she became the big boss and would yell at me and boss me around and it ticked me off, and so I found ways to pay her back. We won't go into all that. We won't go into all that this morning. 
Hush. Uh, but I remember I was in, oh, I think I was in second grade. I was walking through the hall and a fifth grade boy started to pick on me and threatened to hurt me. And when he said that, about that time, my sister was coming out of her classroom. And she went over and I thought she had abused me. She got all in this kid's face and told him off. And then she said, if you ever lay a finger on my brother, you're going to cry all the way back to your mama. <laughs> and I was like, it looks like Rhonda. <laughs> Dresses like Rhonda. Acts like Rhonda. That can't be Rhonda. I go up to her. I'm like, what was that? She goes, ain't nobody going to mess with my brother. And I'm like, I didn't know you cared. I didn't know you cared. She goes, no, nobody beat you up but me. There it is. <clears throat> there it is. You all know what I'm saying? Now, look, we're not beating up each other. But if anybody messes with anybody in this place, they're going to have a fight with us. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not going to fight for you. I'm going to fight with you. I'm going to defend you. I'm going to stand up for you. Your fight is my fight. Amen? We uplift you. We're all going to have those moments when we're discouraged and we're down and we're stressed and we're going through things. And that's what I need you to know. You've got somebody that will lift you up in the spirit. Look around. Look around. You're not alone. You're, don't you dare stay home and cry yourself to sleep because you're alone. You are not alone. Don't you dare slip into depression. You're not alone. Don't you dare listen to the lies of every suicidal demon that is trying to convince you to take your life out and nobody will notice. We are here for you. I'm telling you right now, in this hour, in the last two years, the enemy has released a spirit of destruction and people are killing themselves. People are harming themselves. People are doing things that they never should be doing and because they fail to realize that there are people that are here for them. And we lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Say it with me. I am not alone. I am not alone. I, I'm not unseen. I'm not invisible. I'm not alone. The lie that if I was gone, nobody would notice is just a lie. It's just a lie. You know, when you're not here, and nobody knows why you're not here, we get concerned. Where are they at? What happened? Is everything okay? I hope they're all right. You know, and we try not to reach out too much because we don't want you to feel like we've got you on a leash. But you just need to know, when you're not in that seat, you're missed. Amen? Amen. And finally, we're fam. We have family. Now, I know depending, depend, let me explain this, depending on your experience, it might not sound like a very good thing to say we are family. But we are family in the real sense of the word. I mean, we've all, ha we've all had family experiences, haven't we? Huh? Oh, some of y'all never had Thanksgiving dinner? Huh? We've all had those experiences where we have a negative relationship with family, right? You know? The crazy uncle, the domineering father, the manipulative mom, the snotty sister. I'm not talking about my family, so don't go there. Um, but that's not what I mean by family, right? That's not what I mean by family. I'm not, I'm not talking about people that try to manipulate you and lie to you and deceive you and frustrate you and I'm talking about family. Jesus said that there is a friend that sticks closer than any brother. It's his desire that we be family. And we're family. If you have a need, let us help you. If you're struggling, let us help you. If you're going through it, let us help you. I don't know why I'm saying this other than I feel the Holy Spirit this morning but don't try to resolve your loneliness through a bottle or a needle 
or anything else that you feel satisfies. Don't reach out to that. Don't reach out to alcohol or drugs or any other way. Don't reach out to that stuff. Reach out to your brothers and your sisters in Christ who's here to help you. Amen. You know, the Bible says they had all things in common and they went from house to house to house to house fellowshipping with one another. That's actually how communion started. Communion was never in the synagogue. Communion did not start by the first Sunday of the month, them coming together and having wine and bread together as a form of worship. Communion was actually designed by God for it to be done as we fellowship with one another in each other's homes. It wasn't until hundreds of years later we decided to make it a religious exercise. Some, a lot of people don't know this, but that's what he said. That's why he didn't say, when you do it once a month, do it in remembrance of me. He said, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. He said, if you're, going, if, if you're together in each other's homes, having a meal, at the end of the meal, have communion and remember me. And that's what they did. Now we're living in a time where they want to shut us, isolate us, keep us off from one another. I think it's time that the people of God remember the days of fellowship dinners, not in the fellowship hall, in homes. Seeing somebody at church and saying, hey, Thursday night, you want to come over for dinner? Sure, what do you want me to bring? That is what strengthens the church, is us not being afraid to be with one another, to encourage one another, amen? To bless one another. Because if there's anything us Pentecostals know how to do, it's eat. Huh? So let me encourage you. If you see somebody here that you don't know, don't you dare leave today until they know your name. Go and meet them. Invite them out for a cup of coffee. Take them for lunch. Invite them into your home. If you know somebody in church that is all by themselves and they don't have anybody, make sure they're at your Thanksgiving table. Make sure they're at your Christmas table. Make sure that they're together. There shouldn't be anybody in this place that is alone on a holiday when we are family. Somebody say amen. amen. Come on, let's give God praise this morning. Amen. So everybody stand with me. <clears throat> I want to do this today. I prayed all week about how to make... I think it would be a sin for us to hear this type of a word and do nothing with it. Do you agree? And so I don't want you just to listen. I want you to act upon this. So I'm just going to ask as many as are comfortable, as many that will, would you step out from where you are and come meet me in the front? We're going to make a commitment to God of unity. We're going to make a commitment of God in, in unity. As many as will come, as many as will come, we're going to come and make a dedication to God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a beautiful picture this is. What a beautiful picture. Amen. Thank you for bearing with my voice today. I apologize. But we got the word out anyway. Amen. 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 Come on in. Scoot as close together as you can. Yeah, get as close as is as uncomfortable for you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. We're going to pray. And our prayer is a prayer of commitment to be unified, to walk together, to talk together, to be together. And look around. Look around right now. Look at, look at the generational differences. Look at the background differences. We're all from a different place. Some of y'all are born, raised Missourians. We got some South Kakalaki over here. We got North Carolina over there. Tennessee. Texas. Maine. Florida. All over the place. We got different backgrounds. Different backgrounds. But in this place right now, we are making the decision to be one we are one 
Say it with me. We are one. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person in this church that the spirit of unity would descend upon them now even as you desire to fill us. I pray for an overflow of love, an overflow of agreement, an overflow of unity right now in the name of Jesus. Father, as you and Jesus are one, so we are one. Make us one in you. Make us one with one another. One heart. One mind. One purpose. In Jesus' name. Say this with me. I receive, I receive unity in my life. Unity in my life. I, am I am empowered to overcome, to overcome all, division, all division, all dissension, all, dissension, all, discord, all discord, all strife, all strife and all gossip. It has no place place. in this house house or in my life. life. I declare declare and I decree decree that we are one. one. We are family. We are are not alone. We We do not fight with one another. another. But we stand with one another. We We fight for one another. another. In Jesus' name, name. we are family. Somebody say amen. 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 Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're stronger together. We're stronger together. What do I do with this, Pastor? How do I move forward? Let me tell you, when you struggle, don't keep it to yourself. You know, sometimes we don't share what we're going through because we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want people to know that we're weak. You know? Being stronger together means we have accountability with one another. That if, I, if, I'm a, if I'm a man that is struggling with pornography, I don't need to hide it. I need to reach out to a godly man that I go to church with and ask for help. If I'm a lady and I'm having, I'm having trouble getting drunk every night, It's not a glass of wine with my meal. I'm getting hammered every night. Don't hide it. Reach out to another godly lady and say, will you help me? I need some help right here. If you're here, and let's just say, you can see it. Gossiping is my weakness and I don't know how to stop. Don't keep it to yourself. First of all, you're not going to be able to keep it to yourself. (laughs) It's going to come out somehow. <laughs> Reach out and say, I, I, it's, I want to stop, but I can't stop. Reach out because we are not here to judge you. We are here to help you. Amen. We are not here to cast blame on you. We are here to help you. This is a safe place to grow. This is a safe place. And look around. Isn't this a beautiful picture? Look around. In this place, we are one. Amen. That song I had my wife sing a few weeks ago, you're my brother and you're my sister, so take me by the hand. Together we will work until he comes. We are, we are, we twisted together. You can take that any way you want. We twisted. We're twisted together like a three chord band. Amen. We are together. So let's just, can we just take a minute and just worship? Just lift your hands, close your eyes and just love on God. Thank Him for making us unified. Thank Him for strengthening you. Thank Him for making you one. Open your mouth and just exalt Him. Lord, You're worthy, You're worthy, You're worthy, You're worthy. Thank You, Father. Thank You, Father. We are one. We are one. We love You. We glorify Your holy name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Let's do one last thing before we go. If you remember a few weeks ago, we tried it. It didn't go that well. Let's try it again. I'm going to say we are, and you're going to yell stronger together. Okay? Let's practice one time. We are stronger together. You got it. Let's do it three times. Y'all ready? We are stronger together. We are stronger together. We are stronger together. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen. <clears throat> Before you leave, turn around and love on somebody. And if you don't know somebody, meet them in Jesus' name. <laughs>